So we're going to go over how to import graphic files at different resolutions or just a static resolution. So if I select my bin and choose File, Import, oops, File, Import, then I can select any graphic file that I want. So I'm going to go into my Downloads and then select a graphic file that I downloaded. Uh, at this point, I need to decide which drive it's going to go on to. So right now we're going to send it to our documentary drive. I can go into Options and choose how I want this file adjusted. So if I want it sized for the current format, which means that it'll, if it's taller or wider, uh, whenever it hits an edge, it'll just stop scaling at that point. Uh, I can resize the image to fit the format raster. Do not resize smaller images, which again, if the image is smaller than my HD frame, it won't matter. Uh, re usually in the end, we resize the image. Graphic uh, pixel map mapping mode is always a difference. You always want to choose 601 and choose OK. So once again, we're going to choose our little baby here and then hit OK. Imports in a JPEG file. There it is. You can see it scaled it from top to bottom just because the way that this, this particular file is done. Uh, I can edit it into my timeline in the normal way. Drop this on top of it and overwrite. So now I've got a happy baby in my timeline. Now underneath, I have color bars. So right now you can see it added a kind of a side black mask for me. Um, so if I wanted to do something a little more um, logical here, what I would do is I would choose, uh, first of all, I'm just going to go back to my project window, and we're going to choose our effect. So my favorite effect is the picture-in-picture -picture effect, which is under blend. Drop, toss it on top of here, and it's going to put automatically a 50% resize on the baby. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, and I'm actually going to crop. So I'm just going to come in. Crop the left edge in a little bit, and the right edge in. We'll call that good. So since I haven't set any keyframes yet, that's a global. So now when I drag my blue line position indicator, I can now see it happens globally. So if I want to do kind of a, a zoom or a push into this, um, I'm going to first start this this particular thing it's scaling 100%. Again, with no keyframes, I don't have to worry about it. I click here and I just type in on my keypad to the right-hand side, 100%. So now the baby is 100%. This is the best resolution it can be. Anytime I start zooming into it more in this mode, it's going to start pixelating. So we'll just start our keyframe here. And then if I want to do a push in, I'm going to add a keyframe into it later and just come into my scale and zoom in. So I actually want to zoom into the baby's eye here. So I'm going to just move this around. And I can scale into the baby's eye here. Still looks OK. It's starting to get a little blurry. We can start seeing some pixelization. Um, it's, it's not completely ideal, but it looks clean enough. And it depends on what you're doing. So I can back it up and push play on this. And we can look straight into the baby's eye. And again, we're using just the raster resolution of this file. So we're actually pushing into the pixels. Uh, which is a little bit different than what I'll show you in a second. So this is one great way to do this, and I'm done. So I can just be finished. Or if I really wanted a much better quality out of it, I need to use a different effect entirely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, just remove that effect and that baby from my timeline. And here I've just got a basic clip. I'm going to actually drag in an effect. So I need something to apply this effect to. Um, there's a couple of different ways I can do this. Pan and zoom is the effect I'm going for. I can grab it and put it on top of a piece of, video, piece of video. I can drag it to a blank area in my timeline and it'll just automatically apply it to black. Or if I wanted to be more selective about it, I could go in and set, you know, add edit and say add edit from here to here and then drag my effect into that area. And now during this area, I've got essentially an effect applied to black which is filler. Anything in the added that you don't use is automatically black. So we're going to go inside this effect, and right now it's blank because there's no image imported in. So I'm going to choose image import, then I choose our nice shot of our baby here and hit open. Now we have uh, the baby in our frame once again. This is a little bit different, however. So if I come in and choose add keyframe, and once I've added my keyframe, I want to scale in. So you notice instead of it being a little more dynamic and it's showing me 
um, my the zoom in of my final image, um, it's showing me a box here by default. So I can come in here and I can zoom in and I can keep um, zooming in as tight as I want to straight into this picture. I'm not sure how, how much this picture can show us. And I can show the target and it'll show us how, it, how this is going to look. So again, at a certain point, this picture is just going to start falling apart anyway. So we're going to come out here. There's a nice clear picture. We can I can tell already it's cleaner than doing, having done it the other way. So I'm going to zoom back out for a second here. Uh, I like to see the source here so it, so it kind of looks a little bit more like um, what, what I'm used to. It's all about what you're used to. Uh, so we're going to come in here. There's this guy. There's the baby. There's our first keyframe. Our second keyframe I add here. I can come in and say zoom factor in. And again, we'll just zoom in on the eyeball here. So what's happening is this. So if I change my source to target, then I can see what's happening here, straight into the little eyeball. So now I have to look at different, a few different things. I can, by default, it's easing in and easing out. If I wanted to be a little more fancy, um, I would just change these to linear for my velocity. And I can go to Advanced Keyframer, go into my size, and it's a very linear change. So in any, as any effect in the Avid, I can right-click on it uh, in Bezier, and so now I can curve out that a little bit more if I wanted to. So I can have full control over this. This one uh, is now Bezier as well, so if I wanted to add a nice little S-curve to it, uh, I can certainly do that. Everybody's happy. So it's there. And the last thing we have to do is we have to decide how it's going to be measured or how it's going to be computed. Uh, right now, uh, it's set to triangle. Um, I always have good luck with Avid Ultra High Quality. I can choose Ultra High Quality here. And now I'm done. So now I can close this window, back out, and see what this is going to look like. It's going to preview it in real time. And this just shows me what it's going to look like. Not exactly happy with it, but we'll say that I am. I can always modify this um, by going back into the tool. I'm just going to make this longer here. And so the question is, what happens when you make it longer? Well, it just uh, it, it makes that happen. It, it scales everything exponentially. Now I can hit Render. Always choose the right drive, and it's going to render our effect. I can always stop the render if I hit Command period. It says, do you want to keep what I've already done? It shows up a nice red line to show me where the progress is, so I can actually see, well, is this working for me? And we can see how clean that is. Again, at a certain point, the picture starts falling apart, but uh, pushing into the, uh, the baby's nose here is really clean. So again, if we're doing Ken Burns effects, we, we have a high quality image and we're going to need to want to do that. So that's how you do uh, an image in two different ways.